Ketamine has been in clinical use since 1970. Although best characterized for its dissociative anesthetic properties, ketamine also exerts analgesic, anti-inflammatory, and antidepressant actions. Ketamine is administered to humans via multiple routes, including IV, IM, oral, intranasal, epidural, and intrarectal. The most typical route of administration is via intravenous, which rapidly attains maximum plasma concentrations. Intramuscular administration, which is used in emergency cases of uncooperative patients or neonates and children, has high bioavailability of 93%, with peak plasma concentrations achieved within 5 to 30 minutes of administration. Overall bioavailability of ketamine is limited to 16% to 29%, with peak concentration levels of the drug occurring within 20 to 120 minutes. Due to its extensive first-pass hepatic metabolism, ketamine is rapidly distributed into highly perfused tissues including the brain and has a plasma protein binding between 10 to 50 percent. Ketamine undergoes extensive metabolism initially via nitrogen demethylation to norketamine, a reaction that is catalyzed primarily by the cytochrome P450 liver enzymes CYP2B6 and CYP3A4. Following the methylation of ketamine to norketamine, norketamine is further metabolized to the hydroxynorketamines HNKs and dehydronorketamine DHNK. In adult humans, ketamine has a high rate of clearance and a short elimination half-life, two to four hours. Elimination is primarily performed by the kidneys and excreted as ketamine around 2%, norketamine 2%, and DHNK 16%. The majority of the drug, that is around 80%, is excreted as the clocuronic acid labile conjugates of HK and HNK, which are eliminated in urine and bile. The anesthetic and analgesic properties of ketamine are generally attributed to direct ketamine-induced inhibition of N-methyl D-aspartate receptors, other putative lower affinity pharmacological targets of ketamine include, but not limited to, gamma aminobutyric acid, dopamine, serotonin, sigma, opioid, and cholinergic receptors. Ketamine inhibits the cortex, producing unconsciousness, and thalamus, producing analgesia, and stimulates the limbic system, causing emergence reaction and hallucinations. It also acts on medullary reticular formation and spinal cord. Ketamine increases the brain oxygen consumption, the metabolic rate, and intracranial tension. However, on the other hand, as a NMDA antagonist, it offers neuroprotection. Therefore, it can be used safely in head injury patients who are mechanically ventilated because in mechanically ventilated patients, hyperventilation can be instituted to negate the rise in ICT. Emergence reaction is seen in 10 to 30 percent of patients. The incidence is less in children and old age. Emergence reactions include vivid dreaming, illusions, extracorporeal experiences like floating out of body, excitement, confusion, euphoria, 
and fear. Ketamine produces both auditory and visual hallucinations, mainly auditory. The incidence is about 30 to 40 percent. Now, hallucinations and emergence reactions can be decreased by giving benzos, opioids, barbiturate, propofol and inhalational agents also decrease the incidence of emergence reactions and hallucinations. On the cardiovascular system, ketamine stimulates sympathetic system causing tachycardia and hypertension. Therefore, is the intravenous anesthetic of choice for shock. However, in debilitated patients in whom catecholamines have been depleted, ketamine can cause direct myocardial depression. Now, again, the benzos attenuate these hemodynamic responses such as tachycardia, hypertension and increased oxygen demand of myocardium. Now, ketamine not only increases the systemic vascular resistance, SVR, but also increases pulmonary artery pressure. At clinically used doses, ketamine maintains respiration, however, can cause respiratory depression at higher doses, especially in children. It is such a potent bronchodilator that it can be used in the treatment of refractory status asthmaticus unresponsive to conventional therapy. Now, the pharyngeal and laryngeal reflexes are preserved and tracheobronchial and salivary secretions are increased, producing laryngospasm. Therefore, use of atropine or clacopyrrolate is necessary with ketamine. Now, ketamine also causes increase in intraocular tension. The pupils are dilated moderately and there occurs nystagmus. Intragastric pressure is also increased and as said earlier, the salivary secretions are increased. Anesthetic dose of ketamine range from 1 to 2 mg per kg body weight if given intravenous or 4 to 11 mg per kg body weight if administered intramuscular. Adequate analgesia is achieved at sub-anesthetic doses of ketamine as low as 0.15 to 0.25 mg per kg body weight when administer IV or 0.5 to 1 mg per kg body weight when administer intramuscular to patients following acute trauma. The first placebo controlled study suggesting ketamine has antidepressant actions was reported in 2000. Based on the results reported in that study, an intravenous 40 minute infusion of 0.5 mg per kg body weight ketamine induce a robust and rapid antidepressant response in patients suffering from depression compared with placebo. A study in 2006 demonstrated that ketamine exerts an antidepressant effect that becomes evident within two hours post-infusion and lasts for an average of seven days in patients who have failed to respond to at least two prior classical antidepressant medications. Now coming to the side effects of ketamine. Ketamine dose dependently exerts broad influences on consciousness and perception, with some patients reporting dissociative and extracorporeal sensations when recovering from ketamine-induced anesthesia. The most common psychoactive effects reported after a single sub-anesthetic intravenous administration of ketamine include dissociation, that is distortions in visual, auditory or somatosensory stimuli 
or alterations in the perception of self or all time. Also, positive psychotomimetic effects such as conceptual disorganization, hallucinations, suspiciousness, unusual thought content, and also negative psychotomimetic effects such as blunted effect, emotional withdrawal, motor retardation. In addition to the dissociative and psychotomimetic symptoms, Several studies have identified unfavorable effects of sub-anesthetic administration of ketamine on cognition. Studies have reported that ketamine decreases mental sharpness, concentration, recall and recognition, as well as explicit and implicit forms of memory, either during or shortly after administration. Whereas the acute psychotropic effects of ketamine may cause discomfort for some individuals, its dissociative properties have made it desirable for recreational use. However, some users may experience increased agitation or anxiety or panic attacks. Within 10 minutes following initiation of a 40-minute intravenous infusion of a sub-anesthetic dose of 0.5 mg per kg body weight, healthy subjects reported feelings of being high. Although controlled studies addressing the abuse potential of ketamine are lacking, Valuable information about both the acute and chronic effects of ketamine has been derived from reports of recreational use. And the most common route of recreational administration is nasal insufflation with an onset of feeling high ringing from 5 and 10 minutes and lasting between 40 to 75 minutes. Now, Given that ketamine's maintenance of therapeutic efficacy often requires repeated administration of the drug, it is important to consider the side effects that may be uniquely associated with chronic ketamine exposure. The effects resulting from long-term ketamine treatment are either poorly defined or scarcely reported. To date, Repeated ketamine abuse has been most consistently associated with long-lasting memory-related deficits. Deaths caused by ketamine overdose in the absence of multi-drug intoxication are very rare. Although accidental deaths caused by falls from height, extreme hypothermia, or car accidents involving individuals using ketamine have been reported. Overall, there is no report involving a little dose of ketamine in humans. Nevertheless, in rats, IV administration of ketamine at the dose of 40 mg per kg induce significant lethality. And most, if not all, side effects of ketamine are dose dependent, transient, and self resolving. Now, coming to the advantages and potential uses of ketamine. In asthmatics, ketamine, in spite of potent bronchodilator, is generally avoided due to its side effects and propensity to increase tracheobronchial secretions. The use of ketamine in present-day practice is restricted to patients in active asthma presenting with wheezing and undergoing life-threatening emergency surgeries. It may also be used in shock because it stimulates sympathetic system and it can be an alternative method to inhalational induction in children through intramuscular route. In low cardiac output states like constrictive pericarditis or cardiac tamponade because it increases cardiac output by stimulating the sympathetic system. In case of right to left shunt, 
like tetralogy of fallot ketamine by causing hypertension increases the afterload thereby decreasing the right to left shunt fraction it can also be used as a sole agent for minor procedures such like incision and drainage burn dressings etc ketamine can also be safely used at remote places and in inexperienced hands because it does not depress respiration and the heart it is also the preferred agent for patients with full stomach because the pharyngeal and laryngeal reflexes are preserved now again in case of depressed patients they have a better recovery after ketamine now the disadvantages of ketamine are vivid reactions in the form of hallucinations vivid dreaming and emergence reactions patients given ketamine can be found shouting weeping singing or even abusing badly in post operative rooms it increases the muscle tone the pharyngeal and respiratory secretions are increased which can cause laryngospasm now there is increased myocardial oxygen demand and all pressures like intraocular intragastric and intracranial are markedly raised as such the contraindications include head injury as it increases intracranial tension however ketamine can still be used in mechanically ventilated patients now the contraindication also includes ocular surgeries and glaucoma because it increases the intraocular pressure also in ischemic heart disease patients because it increases myocardial oxygen demand vascular aneurysm patients because it causes hypertension and patients with psychotic diseases and drug addicts because of the higher incidence of hallucinations and emergence reactions now it should be avoided in hypertensive and hyperthyroid patients also in patients with pheochromocytoma